Well, Shoji, we've been talking a little bit about the, the triggers that sometimes we experience or the things that are like the, 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 the warning signs going off. How do we become people who recognize those and recognize what ours are and then learn how to take a healthy next step with it? That is a great question and is actually a very personal question for me because there was a season in my life where the weight of loss, uncertainty, failure, pressure, created anxiety, depression, and even a chronic illness called lupus. So I have learned the hard way that it is really hazardous to ignore the signs. Uh, so the first step in addressing mental health is self-awareness, and the second step is self-care. So to understand the warning signs, it helps to take a holistic approach, just like Jesus taught us. In psychology, we consider it the bio, psycho, social, and I would add spiritual model. We can assess our mental health by evaluating these components in our life. So the first one is biology, and really simply, that's about your body. So what is your body telling you? The emotions that stem from stress and trauma are carried in our body, and it can manifest into mental illness and disease. So self-care really means some of the basics, like how much water am I drinking? Am I sleeping and resting? What is my nutrition and exercise like? Am I managing stress and resting? And is there pain, literally, in my body that I need to actually check out? And this was critical for my own recovery. So the second component is psychology. So psychology involves our thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. So over our lifetime, we develop thoughts about ourselves and about the world based on our experiences. So negative thoughts actually produce difficult and painful emotions, which also produce maladaptive behaviors like addictions. Um, the scripture, as Sean referred to, says to take every thought captive and make it um, obedient to Christ. It also says be transformed by the renewing of our mind. How do we do that? Philippians 4.8 says, think about whatever is true, whatever is noble, right, pure, lovely, and admirable. Anything that is excellent and praiseworthy. Think about these things. And when we don't take care of our mind, our worry turns to anxiety. Our sadness turns to depression. Our frustrations turn to rage and resentment. And honestly, we can't do this work all on our own. There is great wisdom in asking for help, and especially in this category. Now, the th uh, third component is the social component. This is really important because it is part of our biology as well, because we come into this world looking for a face and looking for a voice. So currently, our social component includes our family, our friends, and our work environment. Um, we are actually considered the most connected generation in history. But we are also the most isolated because most of our connection is through our devices. Um, clinicians, as clinicians, we have seen a rise, an epidemic of depression, anxiety, and suicidal ideation even before the pandemic, and especially in teens and young adults. And we need to be able to understand how are we connecting? How are we act, um, in, your, in our relationships? How are we enduring? What are the dynamics at home? Are you more irritable? Are you short-fused? How are your social connections? Our relationships are attachments, um, as attachments have a biological impact in wiring our brain and for creating our capacity to endure stress and trauma. So I would say my one recommendation is make a meaningful connection every single day.